All right, shalom, shalom, shalom. Back for another quick hit. And first and foremost, as always, before I get started, I want to give out praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, and double honors to the head apostles, slash elder bishops of Great Millstone, who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of what people hear or what do they forbear. And, uh, I was watching this this uh, video from Great Millstone, South Carolina's channel. All right, and you see what it's titled: "Latino and Native Americans Celebrate." Quote unquote, "I'm on the list." All right, and <clears throat> it's a good little clip. Faith booster. You see that all the twelve tribes are waking up. All right, all throughout the four corners of the earth. Now, of course, as always, you're always gonna have people coming on the comment boards making their weird comments, mocking and scoffing. So I seen this guy right here, all right, quote unquote, his name is uh, Anthony Bryant, it says. And he asks, he says, how do you know if those, if those girls doesn't come from a European background? All right, now this is how so, uh, Elder, Elder uh, Sequama Natazakba replied. He said, we don't know, but how do you know they did? You people are idiots. If you don't like what we teach and just don't come around us, by the way, a lot of Israelites came from Europe. You really mean, what if their line goes back to Edom, right? Because people, it ain't a color thing, it's a seed line thing, all right? But anyways, so I clicked on the guy's page and <clears throat> first thing I noticed, all right, the guy has his face shaved up, head shaved bald, all right? But he says, I'm from the tribe of Judah, all right? <laughs> so. I went, I'm going back, all right? And another thing I was able to see, when I clicked on his page, I was able to see other comments that he made. And this one right here caught my eye. All right, he says, he says, replies back to uh, GMS South Carolina. He says, if that's the way you feel, but you guys try to put that list out and you don't even know where people's backgrounds come from. Okay, he says, here in America, do you know how many black people come from slave masters who raped black women? the hell out of here with that foolishness all right so this is what the guy said so i saw this and i figured this would be a good opportunity to bring some edification all right so today uh based off of the comments on this comment board i'm going to speak on three different topics i'm um, gonna speak on one as if a man if you if you call yourself a hebrew israelite all right then you need to be speaking only that that which is edifying, all right, as oracles of the Most High, all right, and of course, also if you're mocking and scoffing, all right, judgment is gonna be prepared for you. That's number one. Number two is I'm gonna speak on how do you know if someone is an Israelite because you cannot tell just by looking at them, all right. That's why we say it's not a color thing; it's a seed line thing. Okay, so I'm gonna go into that. How do you know if someone is an Israelite? And even even really more importantly, all right is if they're of the possible possibly of the elect all right because at the end of the day two-thirds of the israelites gonna be destroyed you can be you know you can be you know from the tribe of judah issachar ephraim whatever and the lord still kills you all right because it's prophesied two-thirds gonna be destroyed so it really doesn't even matter it's all about the elect all right and the third thing i'm going to talk about is what he said here when he says in america do you know how many black people comes from slave masters who rape black women all right, I'm going to go into that because there's a parable that Yahweh Shai spoke of, all right, that goes into that topic. All right, and one more thing, I'm also going to go into the uh, 12 tribes chart. So kind of a, a mixture, various topics, all right, because this guy, like I said, he's, he's just, he's a mocker and a scoffer, all right, and, um, you know, but we're going to go ahead and jump right into all these different topics and Lord's will is edifying to the elect. All right. So first, I'm gonna first uh, I'm gonna bring out some scriptures on this right here. All right, on on the mocking and the scoffing. This is the book of First Peter chapter four and verse eleven. It says, "If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of the Most High. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Yahweh giveth, that Yahweh in all things may be glorified." Through Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, 
All right. To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So if any man is going to speak, if you're going to speak, all right, you need to be speaking as an oracle of the most high. All right. Let's get the definition of an oracle. It's like a mouthpiece. All right. OK, it says an oracle, the noun, a priest or priestess. All right. Which really, you know, only men can be preachers, uh, but prophets, but. It says a priest or priestess acting as a medium through whom advice or prophecy was sought from the, let me see, all right, from the gods in classical antiquity, all right, and there's only one and true living God, and his name is Yahweh, and he has his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, but essentially an oracle, all right, is a, once again, a mouthpiece, a medium through whom advice or prophecy, all right, was sought from, uh, was sought from the gods in classical antiquity, so if you're going to speak, all right, if you're going to speak, you need to speak as an oracle of the most high, meaning that you need to be, you know, pretty much speaking the words that he puts in your mouth. All right, you shouldn't just be talking vain babble. All right. Because that's that's what this that's what this guy is. You know, that's what this guy is doing. He, he he's coming on a comment board. All right. Mocking and scoffing. But yet he has his head shaved bald. He's got his his which is against the, the law of the Lord. All right, he got his mustache and his beard all chopped up, once again, against the laws of the Lord. All right, he says, I'm from the tribe of Judah, but is it, it, it you know, it's, it's no, it's, it's no profit to it. All right, the flesh profit is nothing. All right, you only, you have to, you have to be, in order to be delivered, you're going to have to be of the Israel of the Most High. All right, meaning you're keeping the commandments, Galatians 6 and 16. Let's go ahead and get that right quick. All right. So you can be and part and part of that keeping the commandments as well is going out there and doing the work. Galatians 6, 6, 16, it says, and as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of the most high. So as many as walk according to this rule, what rule the laws, statutes and commandments, that's the Israel of the most high. That's the elect. All right, those are the ones that he's going to deliver. So, you know, this guy, he's coming around mocking and scoffing, yet he's got no works out of order, man. Completely out of order. All right. And let's get some more scriptures. Let's get this right quick. Let's get uh, <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 29. It says, judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the back of fools. All right. So you got to be careful what you say, because by thy word shalt thou be justified and by thy word shalt thou be condemned all right once again if you're gonna speak you got to think about what you're saying all right you, you coming around mocking and scoffing all right and once again you obviously ain't got the truth because if you did you would be doing videos you would be out there on the highways and byways preaching but you got the nerve to come mocking and scoffing on a page of someone who's been doing the work you know 10 15 plus years right but this is the foolishness of jake's all right this is the foolishness of, of foolishness of jake all right, so lock you. And it's, as it says right here, judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the backs of fools. All right, so once again, this is an edifying moment. All right, don't be like this guy. All right, let's get the next one. This is the book of Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 27 and verse 28. It says, mockery and reproach are from the proud, but vengeance as a lion shall lie in wait for them. All right, so... Once again, by your mouth shall you be justified and by, by your word shall you be condemned. All right. So you coming around once again, vain babble, talking nonsense, mo uh, mocking and scoffing. All right. You can pretty much you pretty much marking yourself for a judgment, man. All right. So like I said, let this be, you know, let this be a learning lesson. As a matter of fact, Ecclesiastes chapter five. All right. And verse one. It says, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of the most high and be more ready to hear. All right. than to give the sacrifice of fools for they consider not that they do evil. All right. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. What is the sacrifice of fools? All right. That is your your vain opinion. All right. That doesn't hold any weight. It doesn't matter. All right. Once again, you're not you, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Israelite, and now that's what I'm going to go into next. All right, Israelites can come looking like all different nations of people. All right, now, that being said, how how are you going to know all right, if someone is an Israelite or not? How, and more, more importantly, 
possibly of the elect. All right, you're gonna know through the spirit. Okay, you can't look at somebody and because this guy, I'm assuming that from that comment, <clears throat> I'm assuming from that comment, all right, the original, how do you know if those girls doesn't come from a European background? All right, I'm assuming that he's a BOI, a black only Israelite. All right, when in reality, see, the reason why people, they're, they're stuck in that is because the Lord has rejected them. All right, they're just, the Lord has not given them the spirit of truth to understand because, and it's really not that complicated, honestly. It's really not, the, 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 the concept of seed line is not that complicated. Regardless of what you look like, if you are a descendant of Jacob, all right, then you are an Israelite, regardless of what you look like. Like, let's take myself, for example. Okay, if I'm an Israelite, and I, I go into this all the time, if I'm an Israelite and I have a child with a quote unquote Chinese woman, I had a Moabite, and you know, my, my generation continues in, in that land and keeps on reproducing with quote unquote Chinese women, eventually my quote unquote Negro genes are gonna be completely washed out, you know, three, four generations down the line, and my offspring is gonna look completely Chinese, but they're still an Israelite. Is it, does that, just because they look Chinese, does that mean they're not of my seed? Of course not. And that's, it's, it's really simple, honestly, but once again, the Lord has blinded those that he doesn't want to get it. That's why you got idiots coming on the comment board, all right, talking nonsense like this. Now, that being said, how do you tell if someone, right, how do you tell if someone is an Israelite and more importantly, possibly of the elect? All right, we're gonna go into that. All right, so let's get this. Let's get, uh, let's start with, okay, Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. It says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. All right, so you're going to tell who is who, like, like, just like I said, and the same thing with, with other nations. All right, and which most importantly, most importantly, the nations that matter are. Jacob and Esau. All right, pretty much all prophecy stems between those two. All right, you had the seed of the righteous, which is Jacob. All right, the seed of the promise. All right, particularly the elect. And then you have the seed of the wicked that is promised for perdition, destruction, damnation. All right, which is Esau. Now, we say that Esau is a so called white man, and we say that because of prophecy. But even with that, you can't just look at somebody and say, oh, they're, that's a, they're white, they're an Edomite, because you have Jake's that look so-called white, all right, because it doesn't go based off of, it goes off seed line, all right, not skin color. And it's, like I said, it's not a difficult concept to understand, but, you know, these people, they have demons on them, man. That's all, that's all it is. It's got demons on them. Now, let's get that again. Romans 8 and 16. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of the most high. All right, what, is, what does that mean exactly? All right, that means that your, your, a lot of your personality traits, the way that you think, all right, it's all spiritual, all right? And Jake is gonna have a certain spirit on him that's leaning toward righteousness. Now we know that two thirds of our people have been given over to the ways of Babylon. They're completely wicked. They become dross and the Lord is gonna burn them up. All right, we know that, but once again, that's the reason why I said it's really all about the elect of the nation of Israel. All right. Now, let's 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 get into it. All right. How we know. All right. How you know if you have what's known as the Holy Spirit, because only the Israelites are going to receive the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to prove that through the scriptures by the end of this video. This is St. John, chapter 14. And I'm going to start at 15. And it reads, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. All right. Now, this comforter is known as the Holy Spirit. All right. And we're going to it's going to say that a little bit farther down. Verse 17, though, it says even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So the, the people of the world, they cannot receive the spirit of truth. All right. The spirit of truth is going to be given to the elect. All right. The, the Holy Spirit, the comforter. All right. And I'm going to scroll down. OK, I'm going to scroll down to verse uh, 25. So it's St. John chapter 14 and 25. And it says, actually, you know what? <clears throat> I started at 23. OK, actually, 22. 
Mm, 21. <laughs> All right, St. John 14 and 21 says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. All right, then Judas, okay, not Iscariot, says to him, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? All right, so the whole world is not gonna, it's not going to, to know the heavenly father, his only begotten son, because he, he only gave his statutes and his judgments to Israel. All right, and only, as I said, right, as we read in 21, all right, he that, that hath my commandments and keepeth them, all right, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. All right, that's only the, only the Israelites are going to are gonna keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Let's go ahead and prove that. So only the Israelites are going to have the Lord manifest himself, himself to them. All right, let's go ahead and prove that right quick first. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 3. And I'm going to scroll down all the way to the bottom to, um, all right, to verse 34. All right, it says, Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance. And there is also that dwell in the world. And so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. All right. So only that's another thing. Only the Israelites are going to have the true name of the Lord. OK, and there's plenty of verses. That, that's another video I can do another time. But verse 35. Or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in thy sight? Or what people have so kept thy commandments? It says thou shalt find that Israel by name hath kept thy precepts, but not the heathen. All right, so only Israel, all right, and it says Israel by name, meaning the Israel of Yahweh, all right, as we read in uh, Galatians 6 and 16. So not even all Israelites, but the elect, all right, only the elect is going to keep the Lord's commandments and have the Lord manifest himself to them. All right, going back to St. John chapter 14, all right, 22 again, Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? And Yahweh shall answer the sinner to him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. All right, and what is that? That's the Holy Spirit entering into you. That's the reason why the scriptures call us uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It says that we are the temple of the Lord. All right, the third temple is not a, a, a literal physical temple. All right. And that's why it's funny. It's funny that, you know, if you have the understanding of the prophecies, it's funny to see the fake Jews trying to build a physical temple because the scriptures tell you that it's not an at the third temple is not going to be an actual physical temple. All right. I think it even says that in the book of Hebrews somewhere, maybe Hebrews uh, six or Hebrews 10, one of those. But anyways, um, continuing on. OK, it says verse 24, he that loveth me, not he that loveth me, not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. Okay, verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So how are you going to know if you had a Holy Spirit? He's going to teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. And that's not necessarily... Talking about literally all things in the world, like like I can't tell you how far the moon is from the earth. You know, I can't tell you how many gallons of water in the ocean, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. But when it says teach you all things, it's talking about concerning the words of truth. All right. And bring all things to remembrance. We've we ha haven't the Israelites woken up. Now we know we're Israelites again. All right. All right. We, we have understanding of the prophecies. All right. All this is evidence of the Holy Spirit that the other nations don't have. That's why you don't see any any uh any prophets of 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 jesus all right you don't see any prophets of, of you know of heathen nations you don't see edomite prophets out there they're not bringing out no prophecies because they don't get it all right they can't understand it because it's only given through the spirit of truth this is one of the ways that the spirit bears witness with you that you are a son or daughter of the most high is if you have the ability to understand these prophecies all right because it's only for the elect once again the lord is going to make known his, his uh, uh, manifest himself to those that keep his commandments. Only the Israel of God, only the Israel of Yahweh is going to keep his commandments. We just read that in second Ezra, the third chapter. All right. And then once, once that happens, then the Holy Spirit will be given to you 
and it'll bring all things to your remembrance, tell you that, you know, show you that you're an Israelite. All right. You know, and, and, and uh, also it will teach you all things. You'll start to gain the understanding of the prophecies. And like I said, I'm going to I'm going to back that up with some more scriptures. Let's go to the next chapter. All right. St. John, chapter 15. OK, St. John, chapter 15 and verse 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the father, even the spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the father, he shall testify of me. All right. So it says he shall testify of me. Now, what is the testimony of Yahweh Shai? Let's get that. OK, Revelation 19 and 10. OK, Revelation 19 and 10. And this is John the Revelator seeing an angel. All right. It says, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see, thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship Yahweh. OK, listen to this. For the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. All right. So the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Let's bring that back to St. John 15 and 26 again. OK, it says, but when the comforter is come, which is the Holy Spirit, whom I will send unto you from the father, even the spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the father, he shall testify of me. So when when the Holy Spirit comes over you, all right, when the Holy Spirit comes over you, the spirit of truth, it says that Holy Spirit is going to testify of Yahweh Shai because this was him that was speaking. He said the Holy Spirit will testify of me. And what is the testimony of Yahweh Shai? The spirit of prophecy. So that's evidence that you have the true Holy Spirit, because everybody says that everybody says they got the Holy Spirit. You go to a Christian church. They tell you the Holy Spirit's in there. You, you go to the Mormon church. They're going to tell you the Holy Spirit is there. All right. Everybody claims to have the Holy Spirit. But how do you really know that you got it? This right here. Do you have the true testimony of Yahweh Shai? And that doesn't mean just saying, I believe I believe in Jesus. That's not what that's talking about. OK. Revelation 19 and 10, the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. All right. That's the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Now, what is that? What is the, what is the spirit of prophecy? What does it mean to prophesy? I'm right, going to look up that word. OK, so this is, I believe, from the Wikipedia definition. It says in religion, a prophecy is a message that has been communicated to a person by a supernatural entity. All right. As I said before, you cannot break down the prophecies unless you have the Holy Spirit, which is a supernatural entity. All right. That's the reason why you're not going to go into the Christian church and hear them going in the prophecy. You're not going to go into the Catholic church and, and hear them going in the prophecy because the Holy Spirit is not in there. It ain't dwelling in those churches and it's not dwelling with the people. The Holy Spirit is dwelling with the elect of the nation of Israel. All right. Which is the remnant, the one third. And it's a small number of people. All right. Well, actually, I'm not going to say that it, it is a, a an innumerable multitude, all right, as the Bible says. But a, 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 in comparison to the people of the whole world, of the whole earth. All right. It's a small number of people. All right. Very few people can understand the prophecies. Very few people. You have very few men that can actually go out there and teach the prophecies. But these these are the ways that the, that the Holy Spirit bears witness that we are the sons of the living power. All right. So. That's that's one right there. Now, I got another. I got a little bit more for you on that. Let's go to the book of John. OK, same book. Next chapter, St. John, chapter 16. All right. And verse 12. OK, more evidence. OK, this, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy. St. John, chapter 16 and verse 12. It says, this is Lord Yahweh speaking. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. All right. He's speaking to his disciples. He's saying, I got many things that I want to tell you but you're not ready for them. All right. Because it was not the time because according to Daniel chapter 12, the prophecies were sealed until the time of the end. And we're going to get that after we get this. OK, so let's get that again. St. John 16 and 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How bite when he, the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, is come, he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. All right. That's what prophecy is. Prophecy is, is showing you what is coming. We're going to when you prophesy, you tell someone what's going to happen before it even happens. And the only way you can do that is if you've been given that revelation or you've been, that's been revealed to you 
through a supernatural entity, which is the Holy Spirit. All right. So this is this is evidence of the Holy Spirit. So that's how you know if somebody is an Israelite or not. All right. And particularly of the elect is what's really important. All right. Because if if they're not, they can't understand prophecy. All right. Their spirit, the Lord is not going to allow their spirit to understand it and accept it. All right. So, yeah, somebody may look so-called white. Somebody may look so-called Chinese, you know, and for you black only Israelites, you have, like I said, you have the, the Latinos and the Native American Indians. All right. That are also Israelites. Not all of them, but a good a good majority of them. All right. You know, a good bit of them are. And what, what is evidence of that? All right. When you go out to the camps, the only men. All right. Particularly. And I'm speaking particularly of. Great Millstone, the head apostles slash elder bishops and the men on down and the affiliate camps are the only men that you see out there every every weekend. All right. And multiple times throughout the week, hundreds of videos going up. All right. Daily. All right. Out there on the highways and byways that are actually prophesying while your black ass is sitting on the couch, mocking and scoffing to my from the from Judah. Right, you could, which don't mean it would don't mean nothing because at the end of the day, once again, the Lord ain't gonna save all Israelites anyways. So even if you are an Israelite, even if you are from the tribe of Judah, the fact that you have no works, all right, the fact that you're not out there on the highways and byways prophesying yourself, all right, that shows that you got a lack of faith and a lack of the Holy Spirit. So just shut your mouth, all right. But anyways, continuing on, okay. Let's see. It says verse fourteen, John sixteen to fourteen. It says, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the father hath are mine. Therefore, said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. All right. And, and Yahweh was given the understanding of the scriptures. All right. Revelation five and five. He was he was the one that I so like just chapter or Revelation chapter five. All right. He was the one that was accounted worthy to open the seals of the book. All right. Now, this same. The same uh, understanding, the revelation of understanding is spoken of in Daniel chapter 12. OK, so this is Daniel chapter 12. And I'm going to start up at verse. Uh, all right. I'll start up at verse two. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right. So, you know, you know, you're an Israelite. Because the Lord did wake up, you know, he's waking up a good, you know, good bit of people that are Israelites. But you see all kind of uh, all kind of uh, folly and foolishness in, in the nation of Israel. All right. Once again, with the with the uh, the gimmicks, all right, the mockers and scoffers, the black only Israelites, you got the, the, the vegetarian Israelites. I mean, it's all kind of, you know, weirdo doctrines that are not biblical. All right. Why is that? OK, because this right here. All right. Some that uh, many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. All right. The dust of the earth, meaning the confusion of the earth. All right. Some to everlasting life, okay, which is the elect and some to shame and everlasting contempt, which is the two thirds. All right. So they're going to be they're going to be destroyed. All right. And it, when it says everlasting, it just means for a very long time. Right. Because we know that through reincarnation that that the the, uh, the two thirds that die on this side. All right. From death by pain, they're going to know the Lord when they come back all right so anyways continuing on it says verse three and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness even as the stars forever and ever but thou o daniel shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased all right and, and what what is going to do that all right the holy spirit is what is going to bring that great awakening all right. The Holy Spirit is, gonna, is what's going to bring that great awakening. And to those that are of the elect, all right, they're going to they're going to rise out of the dust of the earth unto everlasting glory. All right. Everlasting life. And they're going to be the ones that are out there on the highways and byways prophesying. All right. Preaching the testimony of Yahweh Shai, which is the spirit of prophecy. All right. Scrolling down Daniel chapter 12 and verse nine, and it reads. It says, and he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white. OK, that means once again, pure and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand. 
but the whys should understand. So why is this a stumbling block? All right, for the, for this for this uh, commentator on the comment board, why is this concept a stumbling block for him to where he's mocking and scoffing? All right, telling telling the, the the men of the Lord that they need to get out of there with that foolishness when he when he ain't doing nothing, he ain't got no works. All right, so it's a stumbling block to him. Why is that? Because he's most likely numbered among the wicked. All right, because as it says. It says, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. You see, all right, the, the ways that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai are stumbling blocks unto the, unto the wicked uh, Esau Edom and to the wicked of our people, the two thirds. All right, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 39 and verse 24. As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. All right. So that's the reason why he can't get it. It's a stumbling block. That's why he's on the comment board mocking and scoffing. All right, now, so that's two topics covered. All right, pretty much topic number one, if you're going to speak, speak as an oracle of the Most High. All right, topic number two, how do you know if you got the Holy Spirit? All right, because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy. Do you understand prophecy? If you don't, and, and, and when, I, when I say that, I don't necessarily mean, you know, because nobody, you have to be taught. All right, you have to be taught. Uh, nobody, mo well, I'm not gonna say nobody, but most people are not gonna read it and understand it right away. You know that doesn't that doesn't mean that you're wicked. But when it's broken down to you and you can't get it, it's a stumbling block unto you. It's because the Lord is blocking your understanding, and that's because He wants to destroy you. Let's go ahead and get that right quick. This is the book of Mark, chapter four, and verse. Um, all right, verse eleven. Okay. It says, and he said unto them, Yahweh shall I speaking unto you, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of the most high. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. All right, so there you go. So the, the Lord, he said, he purposely, all right, has has blocked their understanding because he doesn't want to forgive them. All right, this is in Isaiah the sixth chapter as well. All right, but once again, that's the reason why it's because they're wicked. They they are that's their lot to be of the two thirds. All right, and of course the heathen nations are not going to get it either. All right, now uh, what else was I going to get? Okay, let's go into the the twelve tribes chart. All right, because I I, I take this guy Anthony Bryan, I take him to be a, a black only Israelite. All right, just by that stupid comment that he made. So, you know, because you a lot of black only Israelites, they have a problem with the 12 tribes chart, even to the point where they've made a new one where the 12 tribes are in, quote unquote, West Africa, <laughs> which is hilarious because it tells you um, in second Ezra, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to go into it, I'm just going to quote it. it tells you in uh, second Ezra 13th chapter that the that the northern kingdom, after they were exiled out of a out of the Assyrian kingdom. All right, the first beast that they came to a land known as Arsareth, all right, which is a land that no man had ever dwelt, which we know to be America. All right. And where, when uh, Christopher Columbus came over here, he came with Hebrew interpreters because he knew, according to the scriptures, that he was going to encounter what is known as the northern kingdom. All right. It also says in Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 33 that Israel and Judah are right, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom were oppressed together. All right, those, those people in West Africa were not oppressed with the Negroes here in America. All right, with the descendants of slaves. As a matter of fact, they were the ones that were selling us into slavery to the Europeans. All right, which you could read about in Joel chapter three. All right, and why are they, why were they doing that? Because we're not the same people. They are Hamites. All right, we're both. You know, the Southern Kingdom of the of the Israelites are. You know, uh, uh, dark brown, so-called black. We have similar skin tones, but we're different people. All right. But anyways, that's a that's a uh, lesson for another day. But anyways, I want to I want to show you in the scriptures where the 12 tribe chart is actually spoken of. All right. Because a lot of B.O.I.s have a problem with that. All right. This is Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 15. It says the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, moreover, thou son of man, Take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel and his comp his companions. All right. And who is that? Who is that? It's talking about the southern kingdom for Judah 
It says, for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick, all right, and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. All right, so Judah is the chief tribe of the southern kingdom and really of all the Israelites. And then Ephraim is the, is the chief tribe of the northern kingdom. All right, so it says, take a stick, all right, take a stick, southern king and write the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom on it together all right and what does it say verse 17 and join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in thine hand all right so that's where you get the board from all right that's where you get the 12 tribes chart or right, sign okay it's all it says that they, that all will be one in the hand of the lord okay all right that both the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom all right that's a, a symbolic we are that is a, a representation of the two, the two kingdoms are right, becoming one again. And it's going to tell you that. You keep reading. Okay. Ezekiel 37 and verse 18. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Okay. Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him even with the stick of Judah and make them one stick and there shall be one in mine hand and the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. Okay. So anyways, there you go. That's, that's the explanation on the 12 tribe chart right there. All right. And uh, pretty much symbolic. So people see it and it's just a representation that both the Southern kingdom and the Northern kingdom are one people are, are one, uh, one nation altogether and are being returned all right ain't going to be a southern and northern kingdom anymore it's just going to be the elect of the nation of israel all right yasha allah all right which yah meaning he shah meaning prince and allah power so he prince power all right the princes of the power the sons of yahweh bahashem yahweh shai okay now continuing on <clears throat> what was the last thing oh okay i was gonna get i was gonna go and respond to this Last part of the comment that this Anthony, Mr. Anthony Bryant said here in America, do you know how many black people come from slave masters who raped black women? The hell out of here with that foolishness. All right. Well, Yahweh I spoke a parable on this topic. All right. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 13 and verse 24. OK, it says another parable put he forth unto them, saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field, all right? And that man would be Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, all right? And the field is the earth. He sowed that good seed. What is the good seed? That is the Israelites. It says, verse 25, But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. All right, and what is this? Who's the enemy? Our enemy is, well, Esau Edom, who, who is being ruled over by the spiritual demon Satan. All right. And he he sold tares among the wheat. And what, if you look at a wheat and a tear, are right, they look very similar? Let's just go to Google and get a picture of that. All right. Let's go to images, see what comes up. Boom. So most people and myself included would not be able to tell the difference between the two if we see them in the wild. All right. They pretty much identical. All right. So uh, it does it does show you right here. It tells you how to tell the difference. But pretty much all right, they, they look very similar. All right. And actually, I like this picture because it says the wheat. All right. Which is the good seed. All right. The seed of the righteous bends over to me. I take that as a symbol. Uh, and I, this is just my own interpretation, honestly. So don't quote me on this. All right? A wheat that's bent over represents humility. All right. Like you're bending down. And bending, bending your knee, or right, bending and bowing your head as a servant of the Lord, and a tear is sta is going to stand tall. A tear is going to be prideful, arrogant, all right, pompous, all right, kind of like this guy right here. All right, he may he may look like a so-called Negro. All right, he he's labeled himself under the tribe of Judah, but then he, the dude got his head shaved bald and he's got his, his his mustache and beard all chopped up. All right, so I think that's a just now. Like I said, that was just my own little. You know, twist on it. So, Salaki, so if I said anything incorrect, but anyways, uh, continuing on, Matthew chapter thirteen and verse uh, twenty-six says, "But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, 
Then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst that not thou sow good seed in thy field from, from in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He would say, Why why does it have tares? I thought you sowed good seed. He said unto them, An enemy have done this. The servants unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, don't do this, don't gather up the, the, the tares. Lest while you gather up the tares, you, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together into the harvest. In the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in, bu in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. All right, now I can break this down, but I think that how I broke it down in this chapter. Yep, here it is. Okay, so this is what it means. Okay, Matthew 13 and 36. Then Yahweh said and sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. All right, who's the wicked one? Esau. All right, the slave master, the physical counterpart of the spiritual demon Satan, who we know of today as a so called white man. All right. It says, but the enemy that sowed them is the devil, where devil means adversary. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. All right. So anyways, um, oh, okay, I'm going to keep reading. Got a few more verses. It says, verse 41, the son of man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. All right, now, as they said before, all right, quote unquote, the, the do you know how many black people come from slave masters who raped black women? The hell out of here with that foolishness. Right, so those people are tares. All right, they look just like, they look exactly like the, the, the other, Isra you know, the Israelites, but their seed line goes back to Esau. All right, because they are the descendants of the slave master. All right. And they're going to be destroyed. So once again, that foolish comment. All right. That, that foolish comment, you know, that, you know, which, like I said, makes me to believe that he's a, a black only Israelite, which there's a lot of quote unquote black people that are Hamites also. All right. Just because you're black doesn't mean that you're, you know, the southern kingdom. So it's just it's just foolishness all the way around. Um, but. Anyways, you know, uh, the spirit is what beareth witness, all right, that you are the sons of the living powers. And the spirit is going to have you, you know, understanding prophecy and going out there and giving the testimony of Yahweh Shai, which is the spirit of prophecy. All right. So that's what you're going to be doing. That's what you're going to be doing, Mr. Mr. Anthony Brant. All right, Bryant. All right. You need to keep your mouth shut unless you're going to be out there on the highways and byways preaching this word. All right. Let your hair grow back and stop. Shaving and, and chopping on your beard. All right. Turn back to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father, and there's only begotten Son, and fear the Lord. All right. For this is the whole duty of man. But once again, most likely, you're either a two third or you're a terror yourself. All right. But, anyways, I'm going to close out with that. Lord's will, it was edifying. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Kahakwadash. Double honors to the head apostles, slash elder bishops of Great Millstone. Who teach and who rule well and who taught me this truth. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of what we hear or whether they forbear. All right. Shalom to all you wheats out there. One day closer. Shalom.